Hi, Nick from Vulcan Gunnery finishing here. Well, we got a project in the shop today that I thought would be pretty interesting, and I thought we'd video it. We haven't done any videos in quite a while, so we got one here that you won't see every day. Um, it's uh, customers telling me it's an 1894 Badeo, maybe an 1884 Badeo. It's a French pistol. Uh, originally, at, at uh, one time, apparently, it had a trigger guard, had a complete trigger guard in this area and a fixed trigger. Now the trigger is movable and there's no trigger guard. And these were apparently modified for the uh, French Navy. And they did that trigger guard modification and I believe they even shortened the barrel if I remember correctly. I don't have all my facts on these yet. So, But anyway, it's a project we're going to take on and uh, maybe you can already see, but this has a significant amount of pitting. I mean, quite a bit of pitting. It's going to take a fair amount of laser welding to try and get all that uh, cleaned up and uh, subsequent heat treating afterwards. This is going to have a high polished blue, so we'll have to be polishing it fairly fairly high afterwards. It won't have that satin brush finish like a lot of them do, that I do. So, but you can see just how extensive the pitting is. It just, uh, it's, it's quite bad. Thank goodness the cylinder's not too bad. We don't have really much many issues, much damage in the cylinders, that's good, it's a tricky area to fix. But the barrel and the top of the frame are just, uh, are the worst of it. And uh, we'll probably repair this, probably keep the front sight in place, so we'll have to work around that front sight. Looks like they did too, because you can see where they, they didn't get it polished around that front sight hardly at all, so front sight must have been in their way as well. So, and some of the uh, pieces on this gun, for example, the trigger, and th whatever this is, and your uh, ramrod, cleaning rod, ejector, ejector rod, I suppose, and the hammer, and the uh, gate, the loading gate, they're all uh, either bare metal or slightly parkerized. I'm not really sure. I'll have to research that a little bit. The grips are loose. They're not in too bad a shape. We're probably going to uh, sharpen up that check ring a little bit, and we got to definitely make them make them fit better. They fit. Pretty, uh, pretty loose, pretty sloppy. So, it's got a lot of blind pins in here. You can see them. They're not easy to see, but you can see them. See the ends of them. They color a little bit differently on the ends. So I'm not sure if we have to remove all of those pins or what. If we do, we're probably going to damage them, or we may have to make new pins because they're going to have to be round, sanded, flush again. So if we try to drive them out, we're going to put marks in the in the heads of the pins. So. There's two pins here that look like they might be removable, but I'm not sure about the rest of them. We'll have to research that a bit. So next step, obviously, is going to be to tear it down and uh, degrease it. And uh, we'll see where, you know, where we are at that point. Thanks. All right, so we got our uh, Badeo back from the uh, laser welders. And, oh, my goodness, you've got to see this. This is just amazing, the, the detail of this welding. You can see just the rows and rows, the multiple rows of weld that have been done. You know, we only had the really deep, I mean, look at look at how how uh, detailed that welding, how many rows, how many beads of uh, weld they've got there. It's incredible. It's the only way you could do this, because you'll notice there's not even any bluing of the metal from the heat around the weld. That's how little heat there is. So we've got no warpage, no damage of any type. That's the only way you could precisely go in and, and weld pits. So we've only dealt with the really deep pits. A little stuff like this, we can file that away without anybody ever knowing that. We can't weld every pit in. It would cost an absolute fortune. But So that's that uh, side plate. But the frame is what we really have to show you. And it, the welding on this frame is just incredible. That's what I wanted to show you. Is Once again, all the, all the... I mean, just look at that, how detailed that that is right there. All the little puddles of weld. I mean, I'm a good welder, but this is phenomenal. Of course, when you got the right equipment, the right machinery, then uh, that makes a world of difference. So once again, we just dealt with all the really, really bad stuff. I mean, this top end is going to be quite a challenge to get that all back nice and straight. Uh, you know, these lines are, are very, very even and straight, so we've got to do this all by hand. Plus, we've got to make it look like there's actually a seam right here. You know, there's not going to be one where, you know, it'll look like there's one, but there's not actually one anymore. They had to weld all that right in. I didn't want to try and separate the barrel from the frame. I don't have the proper tools, you know, receiver wrenches or anything to do that. So, but I just wanted to show you the uh, the amazing welding that goes on.
just all back here again, just rows and rows of it, all on the back. That back strap is all just rows and rows of weld. We won't worry about the front strap. We're going to file all that away. That's not going to be a problem. You'll never know that that was uh, pitted. So, so everything is coming along really good. So now the next step, well, let me show you a couple other pieces first. It had this little piece. This is a piece that went in. This is the escutcheon that went in that grip, that one grip that you could see that had a piece glued back in it. It came loose after we uh, boiled it. But that was all pitted and eaten away, so now we've got that all rebuilt. That'll look like new again. And the hammer had a a big uh, chunk or whatever out of it right there so we've got that filled and we'll have to hand uh, checker that afterwards but once again just look at that welding it's just unbelievable and then the cylinder had one really bad spot on the cylinder so we got that taken care of the rest of it is no big deal we'll spin that in a lathe when we're done clean that up make it look brand new and then just a little piece on the trigger right there a little piece right there and on that corner so other than that all the other parts all these parts here we're just going to uh, file them. None of them are pitted very badly. Some of them are internal parts, so we won't even worry about those. But uh, any of the external parts, a little bit, you know, we'll hand checker that or uh, serrate that. We'll sharpen that all up again. But it's coming right along. So now we're going to send it out and get it annealed, get it heat treated, get it annealed, get it softened. And when it comes back to us, then we can file it, get everything nice and pretty. And when we're real happy, uh, we'll send it out for hardening. I mean, there's a chance that. You know, with this much damage and all that, there's a chance it might have to go back in and get a little bit of weld touch-up before it goes in for, for hardening or whatever. But we'll know that after a good day, of, uh, good day of filing. So anyway, that's it for now. So stay tuned, and we'll, uh, we'll continue on our little journey. All right, so we sent out the Badeo for a little more welding, touch-up welding, we call it. Um, now here, this whole upper part, we had that built up a little bit more. It was a little bit low, and then we had this area here uh, built out a little bit further so it would line up, because this barrel has to look like, you know, like it's a separate piece, so we had to build that front edge up so it would line up with the rest of this. So once again, as I said before, we won't be able to remove this barrel now. It's part of, part of the frame, but there's just no way we were going to take a chance on trying to remove that and damage anything. So. So they went ahead and they re-welded in quite a few places, you know, where we had pinholes. With as much welding as they had to do, it's pretty common to have uh, pinholes left over. So, so that's going to be all fine now. There shouldn't be very many pinholes anymore now. So, and once again, you can just see all the super detailed uh, welding that's done to this. You see, we're starting to get a little bit of rust in here already. Eh? So we'll have to send this out. We're going to send this out now and get it annealed, which will soften up all the welds. And then we'll be able to uh, get back and file and grind everything and get her all looking pretty. So, uh, yeah, so that's about it. So, yeah, back here as well. So, wherever it needed it. So this should basically take care of, you know, 99% of the pinholes. There might still be the odd stray one that's going to be left when we're all done. But that's, that's as good as we can get it. The welders, uh, welders go in and do their diligence. But sometimes old, dirty steel, bad metallurgy. They can't get it always perfect, but it's going to look pretty good. So, so that'll be it for that one. So uh, we'll give you a heads up once it uh, gets finished. All right, great news. We have our Badeo all done. We've got it all blued. Some parts got parkerized. We stayed faithful to the original design of the gun. Basically, this is an 1874 Glazenti that was modified into a Badeo. And from what we can gather, all the original parts are blued, the Glazenti parts, but then when they went in and they modified, they changed the uh, loading gate and hammer and the trigger, they put that folding trigger and the uh, ramrod and all that. So those parts are parkerized. Anything that was updated for the Badeo uh, standard seems to be parkerized, so we stayed uh, faithful to the original design. But you can remember just how badly pitted this gun was and how good it looks now. I mean, we have a few little areas here that the welders just couldn't overcome. They just, no matter how many times they tried welding, it was still had you know, those impurities in the steel. They couldn't get them out. So there's a few areas where they did heavy, heavy welding um, that, you know, there's still a few pinhole, a little bit of evidence up on the top here. We've got just ever so slight little bit of pinholing or whatever. But not bad. You remember this, this part here, this is almost all solid weld, this whole top part. So that came out quite nice. You know, I, I won't say it's 100%, I'm not a million percent happy, but 
overall I'm quite happy when we consider what it looked like when it came in. A little bit more right there where we got some pitting, a little bit of pitting that we did, they just couldn't overcome it. So, but you know, overall we repaired all the, uh, all the bad spots. Um, we uh, recheckered the uh, grips, recheckered the hammer, uh, went over everything, cleaned up all the, uh, opened these up a little bit, cleaned them up, cleaned all this stuff up in here, cleaned all this stuff up here. So uh, overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It's totally functional. Everything, everything operates just the way it should. If the loading gate is open, if uh, the hammer doesn't work, it disengages it, so that's perfect. But uh, we don't have any ammunition, so we can't test fire it. But, but overall, uh, I would say I'm very happy. If you remember correctly, on the grip here, there was another piece, another piece of wood that in an earlier uh, video you could see this kind of uh, egg-shaped, uh, football-shaped piece of wood up in there. But uh, our girl Kate did such a great job of hiding it, you can't even see it's there now. So she did a nice job. She did the checkering on these grips, too. She did the staining and all that. So... Like I say, overall, I'm pretty happy. The customer's thrilled with it, even with the few little pinholes in it. He's seen it, and he's very, very happy with it. So, so we're going to ship it off, and uh, it was this was probably the worst one we've ever done. Uh, you know, I'm I'm very, very impressed with overall how it did come out. Like I say, we're going to show you some before pictures just to remind you of, of what it used to look like. But uh, really, there's really no nothing you can complain about with that, considering the level of uh, of rot that we had to deal with. So. So we're going to ship it and uh, kiss her goodbye and uh, hopefully we get started on another one. So thanks for watching and uh, send us some comments. Thanks.